Last week, we were learning lots of tools to describe how objects move. We can talk about velocities and accelerations, um, and those were all just descriptions of the motion. Uh, this week, what I'd like to talk about is why objects move. Okay, And this study is called Dynamics, Why Objects Move. And this is in contrast to kinematics, which was just describing how they move. Um, and the simplest answer to this question, why does an object move the way that it does, is that we push on an object. If you push on an object, you can change how it moves. So that's the, the simplest answer, um, and that's where we're going to start. Okay, so um, in order to talk about what happens when we push on an object, we're going to need to introduce a new term, and that term is force. Um, and force is very simply just a push or a pull. Um, so this can be a little tricky because in English we sometimes use force in a colloquial way uh, to mean something different than that. So you might talk about like um, a force of nature or like the force of someone's will. And um, if, if you use that sort of um, that language, it sounds like it's a property of something um, or that it's like some sort of substance or that there's like um, motivation behind it. But that's not how we use it in physics. In physics, a force is just a push or a pull. Um, and those other kinds of ideas where we have like some sort of property or substance, those will correspond better to some uh, subjects that we'll learn a little later in the course. Um, so because a force is a push or a pull, it has to be exerted on something. So an object doesn't have a force. Um, a force is exerted on an object. So forces are always exerted on an object. Um, and furthermore, they're always exerted by another object. We never have forces that just come out of nowhere. Um, they're always exerted on one object, and they're always exerted by another object. Um, so in any given circumstance, if you can't identify what a force is exerted on and what it is exerted by, there's a good chance that it's not a real force. So this is um, a, a good tool to have. You should always be trying to think, okay, what is this force exerted on and what is it exerted by? Um, so let me give you some examples. Um, so one is gravity. All right, so um, if I have, let's say, um, the gravitational force on a person, let's say the force on me, um, that could be force on a person. And if we want to know what object is exerting that force, well, it's the Earth. Or if you were standing on another planet, then whatever that planet is, is exerting the force. But if the planet wasn't there, there wouldn't be a force. Um, another example uh, could be friction. So say you're driving along on the, on the road and you come to a stop. Um, well, that happens because there's a force on the tires of a car by the road. If the road wasn't there, then you wouldn't be able to have this force causing the car to slow down. Um, and another example could be a magnet. So um, in the case of a magnet, perhaps there's a magnetic force um, on the magnet by a refrigerator. Okay. Um, if the refrigerator wasn't there, the magnet wouldn't experience a force. Okay, so these are just some examples. Um, and you should always, uh, whenever you have a force, try to come up with what it's on and what it's by.